My name is Colleen Phelan, and I'm an advocate at the Pima County Attorney's Office. I specialize in the Special Victims Unit, which is exactly like you imagine on TV. Um, so we walk around, we have cameras like this, tracking everything we do and everything we say. Uh, not really. It's a lot different than it looks like on TV. So I spend a lot of time working with attorneys and paralegals, as well as law enforcement, to ensure that survivors of sexual violence are heard and have a voice in the criminal justice process. I've worked at the county attorney's office now for 10 years. And prior to that, I worked at the Southern Arizona Center Against Sexual Assault, also known as SACASA, uh, for five years as both a volunteer as well as a staff member. Sexual Assault Awareness Month is so important for not only our community, but for the entire United States. The epidemic of sexual assault is a, is a health crisis in the U.S. The long-term impacts of sexual violence, including um, the silence that oftentimes goes along with it, is critical for us to address. So April being Sexual Assault Awareness Month is huge because it's the one time of the year where really um, I think all of us advocates want to inundate everyone with all of the information we work within every day. And with the awareness that comes with sexual assault, one of the things we are hoping will happen is that people will be able to find supports that are helpful for them, um, as well as if they are interested in learning how to help, we've got opportunities for that as well. With Sexual Assault Awareness Month, there's a few different activities that are included. So one of them is Denim Day, which this year is on April 28th. And Denim Day started in the 90s out of an Italian Supreme Court decision that essentially said a woman couldn't be sexually assaulted if she was wearing jeans. And so the defendant in this case had been found guilty at trial. The case went all the way up to the Italian Supreme Court and they overruled the trial judge. This really highlights the number of myths that are involved with sexual violence. Everything from what a woman wears will cause her to be sexually assaulted or the idea that only women are sexually assaulted. The statistics around sexual violence and how it impacts members of our community are pretty dire. So we have seen improvements over the last 20 to 30 years, but this number of people who are still impacted is substantial. So we look at one in six men and women impacted, one in two gender non-conforming individuals. And then if we break it down even further and look at different parts of our population, we know that certain age groups are at higher risk but no age group is at zero risk. The other thing that is so critical about folks understanding about sexual assault awareness is that the number one risk factor for being sexually assaulted is having experienced sexual violence before. And the more we talk about it and the more that we encourage healing and sharing, the more we will help people get back those boundaries and recover some sense of safety as they move through our community. And every member of our community should feel safe. Some people become advocates because they knew when they were little that's something that they wanted to do. And I have to admit that I actually sort of fell into advocacy um, when I was really just looking for an opportunity to, to volunteer my time. And the only place that called me back was the, at this point, it was the, the DC Rape Crisis Center. I was living in Washington, DC at the time. And so there wasn't a whole lot of places calling back because in DC volunteering is actually pretty standard, especially during the holidays. So when I started at the DC Rape Crisis Center, I had to go through a really long training and um, it was over the course of three months, a couple nights a week, a couple full Saturdays. And what I realized as I went through the training is that this was really for me, that this kind of connection and being able to share space and create space for people who had experienced trauma was something that I naturally did. Um, I think many of us have been told 
uh, you're easy to talk to, and I like talking to you about things. And so if you're one of those people, I would encourage you to consider volunteering and seeing if this might be something for you. I didn't become an advocate because I had a grand plan, but I became an advocate because it was who I was. And I think that if you have that feeling or you think that you could help, I would encourage you to consider volunteering for our program. We have trainings twice a year and we will provide you with resources and feedback to be able to create space and share it with people um, the same way that I'm able to do every day. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer, the easiest way to get more information is giving us a call at 724-5525 and speaking to our volunteer coordinators. They'll be able to provide you with dates for informational sessions, when the next trainings will happen, as well as talk to you about the specifics of what it takes to be a volunteer in our program. If you have the, the interest of providing support to people who've experienced crisis and trauma in our community, this is a wonderful way to start learning and to start participating in that process. We have volunteers who not only go to court and provide support in that setting, but also on scene during um, or immediately following uh, crimes that have occurred in our community. So there's a lot of opportunity to provide support and help and create that space um, to share healing within our community. There are a number of ways that you can stay informed during Sexual Assault Awareness Month. You can follow us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Additionally, you can follow our partner agencies. So the Southern Arizona Center Against Sexual Assault, the Tucson Police Department, the Pima County Sheriff's Department, as well as University of Arizona Survivor Advocacy Program. And so I would encourage you to um, check all of those out. You can find them at www.sacasa.org slash TUCSAM, which is what we're calling Tucson Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So that's T-U-C-S-A-A-M. And that is also the hashtag that you can follow if you wanna see what's happening and information that is gonna be coming out each week. Additionally, on April 28th, that will be Denim Day. And so you can wear jeans and talk to people about why you're wearing jeans. If you work in a setting that it would be appropriate to talk to your supervisors about wearing jeans, that's an option as well. The other thing that we encourage is a teal shirt. Teal is the color of sexual assault awareness. And we would encourage you to wear teal all month long. <laughs>